Hello, I'm Detective Maddie from Envine PD. Did you see the murderer? Yes, Detective, uh, I saw him. Okay, can you describe him? Yes, uh, he had, uh, ooh, two eyes. Uh, continue? Uh, hair, no, uh, tall, thin, uh, but cheeks, uh, fat. Okay, that was uh, great help. Your name is Rick Sanchez, uh, is that right? Yes. Uh-huh. And occupation? I teach English at university. Hello, my name is Maddie from POC English, and in this lesson, we're going to learn how to describe appearance like a pro. First of all, we're going to listen to my friend Terry, who's going to describe his family. Let's see what Terry says. My father has a round face and his punch really sticks out. My mother has a more oval face and a straight nose. My older sister is like a model. She has a slim figure and a slender waist. She has a lovely complexion and beautiful, sleek, shoulder-length hair, and she's always immaculately groomed. I feel so ordinary next to her. I've got coarse hair and rather broad hips, but she always says I look nice. That was interesting, right? Terry used a lot of words and phrases to talk about his family. Let's see them in three, two, one. Look at all these phrases. Round face, punch, oval face, slim figure, slender waist, Lovely complexion, hmm. sleek shoulder length hair, lovely, immaculately groomed, amazing, coarse hair, broad hips, lovely. Do you know what they mean? Let's learn together. First, let's start with face. Now, somebody's face can be described as round, which is like a circle. It can be oval, oval face, which is like an egg, not a circle, but like an egg, oval. And face can also be wrinkled. For old people, you can use wrinkled face. That is when the skin has some wrinkles on it. Look at my forehead. These are the wrinkles. For example, my grandfather has a round but wrinkled face. The next thing is complexion. Complexion. Pay attention to the way I pronounce it. Complexion. Now, what is complexion? Complexion is the natural appearance of your skin and your face. That is complexion. The texture, the color, the state of your skin is called complexion. Now, complexion can be dark, like dark-skinned. It can be fair opposite of dark is fair, fair complexion or dark complexion. It can be lovely, it can be healthy, it can be smooth. For example, my brother has a smooth complexion because he goes to the gym every day. If you exercise and if you drink plenty of water, you will have a healthy complexion. Next word is waste. Now, what is waste? Waist is the part around your belly. That is called your waist, a little bit below your belly. Now, waist can be slender. Slender waist is a thin but stylish and beautiful waist. This one is mainly used for ladies, for those who are in modeling and have a slender waist. That means their waist is thin and very pretty. My best friend is a model who has a slender waist. Now, the next one is kind of funny, and I'm sure you have a member in your family who has this. What is it? It's a punch. What's a punch? Well, punch is a fat belly, a fat stomach, usually of a man. For example, my father has a noticeable punch. His stomach is noticeably fat. Or look at this example. My uncle is so fat and his punch sticks out and is obvious. His punch sticks out. 
Next one is the verb groom. Now, to groom means to prepare your appearance for an occasion. Let's say you want to go to a job interview. Can you go with messy hair, perhaps with lots of beard and mustache that is not very neat and tidy? Can you go to an interview like that without brushing your teeth? No. You have to groom. What does it mean to groom? Now, to groom means to prepare your appearance for that occasion. Or let's say you're going to a party. You have to groom. Now, the passive adjective of groom is groomed. He is groomed. But you can use an adverb to make it more beautiful. For example, you can say well groomed or immaculately groomed. Immaculately. If someone is immaculately groomed or is well groomed, they are very clean, neat and tidy in appearance. For example, my brother is a model and he is always immaculately groomed. He's a model and whenever you look at him, he's like, wow, you're so neat and tidy and handsome. And now hair. What adjectives can we use to describe hair? Well, you can say hair is short, medium length or long. But you can also use a very interesting one. Shoulder length. If hair is shoulder length, it's obvious. This is the shoulder, this is hair. So your hair goes down all the way until it reaches or touches your shoulders. So if my hair grows until here, I will have shoulder length hair. Hair can be sleek. Sleek hair is kind of a shiny hair that is very healthy. And when you look at it, you know that this hair has good quality. But on the opposite side, it can be coarse. Coarse means rough, not in a very good condition. Rough and thick, coarse hair. Hair can also be dyed. Now dyed means colored. We don't usually use colored for hair. We say dyed. For instance, if you apply, let's say, um, brown color to your black hair, you have dyed your hair brown. It means you've colored it with the color brown. Look at this one. Despite my sister who has a sleek, straight hair, my hair is coarse. It means my sister has very good hair. It's sleek, shiny, neat, but mine, hmm, it's coarse, thick, and not in a very good condition. And finally, the word figure is used to describe the overall appearance, the overall shape of your body. Now, if you have slim figure, what does it mean to have a slim figure? Slim is another word for thin, but does it have a positive meaning or a negative meaning? If you say that someone is thin, that is kind of negative. It's like they are thin, not in a good way, perhaps. But if you say that someone is slim, that is a very positive adjective. It means they are thin in a good way. So if you have a slim figure, it means you are thin in a good way. For example, my girlfriend has a slim figure. I always tell her to become a model. That was Terry. And we have learned a lot of things from Terry, right? Now, we're going to listen to my other friend, John, who's going to do the same thing. He's going to describe his family. But before doing that, let me tell you something. Do you want to have the summary of this lesson with all the new words, adjectives, and phrases in one PDF file? And not just this lesson. Do you want to have the summary of all of my YouTube videos in one PDF file? Well you can download my ultimate English book. In this book, you will find 400 pages of lesson summaries. Wow! And how much is this book? It's entirely free for my YouTube subscribers. But how can you get it? Simply click on the link above my head, go to my website, type in your name, your email address, and click download. You will receive the book in your email, and I'm sure you will enjoy this book a lot. Now, let's get back to our lesson. It is time for John to describe his family. My father and my two older brothers are all well built with broad shoulders. My father is going bald, but he still has a very youthful appearance for someone who's over 40. My brothers both have thick hair 
and bushy eyebrows. My younger brother is only two, but he's very cute, with chubby cheeks. My mother's side of the family mostly have dark hair. In fact, my mother had jet black hair when she was younger, before she went gray. But on my father's side, some have fair hair and some have ginger hair. Interesting, right? He used a lot of words, phrases and adjectives to describe his family. Let's see some of them. In three, two, one. Wow, what are these? Well built, broad shoulders, going bald, youthful appearance. Interesting. Thick hair, bushy eyebrows. Nice. Chubby cheeks, jet black hair, dark hair, went gray. What do they mean and how to use them? Let's learn together. If someone is well built, it means they have a strong looking body. Their body seems to be very strong. Or simply put, they are in good shape. For example, my friend is well built because he's a sportsman. My friend is well built. Why? Because he is a sportsman. Now, if you have hair, but your hair little by little turns gray, you can use the verb go. Go gray. It means they little by little, gradually they become gray. They turn gray. And the past is obviously went gray. My hair went gray 10 years ago. Similarly, if you start losing your hair, you will become bald. Again, you can use the verb go. Go bald. My friend went bald 10 years ago. Or look at this one. My father is bald now, so in the future, I will go bald. If I go bald, will you continue watching my YouTube videos? I hope so. Next one is jet black. Now, black is obvious. It's a color, right? But what is jet black? If you describe something as jet black, it means it is really black, very black, dark, dark, dark black. That is jet black. Now you can say somebody has jet black hair. Or some iPhones come in jet black. It means they have this very dark black color. Next phrase that John used was youthful appearance. A very lovely adjective, youthful appearance. If somebody has youthful appearance, they look young, regardless of their age. For example, my grandma can have youthful appearance. She's 80 but you think she is 40 or 50. Or here's another example. My uncle is 40, but has a youthful appearance. He looks like a 25 year old. Next one is chubby cheeks. This is lovely. Now, cheeks are these parts of your face. You have two cheeks. When you laugh, you can touch your cheek, you can grab your cheeks. Now, some people have very, very fat cheeks in a good way, in a lovely way. They look cute and you want to grab their cheeks and then pull them. Now, these people have chubby cheeks. Chubby is a good way of saying fat. For example, my cute niece has chubby cheeks. Next one is bushy, bushy, bushy eyebrows, bushy. It's not bushy, no, no, no. It's bushy, like book, book, bushy, bushy eyebrows. Now, bushy eyebrows means thick eyebrows. A lot of hair in this part. Bushy. For example, my younger brother has surprisingly bushy eyebrows. And finally, broad shoulders. Now, these parts are my shoulders. If shoulders are broad, it means from here to here, it's a long way. Broad shoulders. And men who have broad shoulders look strong, don't they? Now, enough with my friends. Let me teach you some idioms about describing appearance. If someone looks great, looks amazing, fantastic, fabulous, you can say that person is dressed to kill. If someone is dressed to kill, it means they have worn their best outfit, their best dress, their best items of clothing. They are dressed to kill, perhaps because they're going to a party or they're going out on a date. You can also use this idiom, dressed to the nines. If someone is dressed to the nines, it means they have worn the best 
clothes they have. And another idiom with the same meaning to look like a million dollars. A million dollars look really nice, right? Wow. But if somebody looks like a million dollars, they look really nice. You look at them and you say, woohoo, great stuff. You look like a million dollars. If someone looks exactly like somebody else in terms of appearance, for example, me and my father, or you and your uncle, what can you say? You can say, I'm similar to my father in terms of appearance, but we have some interesting idioms. You can say, I bear a resemblance to. If you bear a resemblance to somebody, you look like them. Now, you can also use this phrase, bear a striking resemblance to somebody. We use an adjective striking to make it even stronger. If you are the exact copy of somebody else, you two will bear a striking resemblance to each other. You can also use this idiom to be the spitting image of somebody. If you are the spitting image of your father, it means you two look exactly the same way. And another interesting idiom with the same meaning that we can usually use to describe twins or people who are really similar in terms of appearance is like peas in a pod or like two peas in a pod. But what if you don't look similar to someone? What if you are quite the opposite? Well, you can say bear no resemblance to somebody else. For example, even though those two are brothers, they bear no resemblance to each other. They don't look like the same. Or here's a very interesting British idiom, like chalk and cheese. If two people are like chalk and cheese, it means they don't look the same way. They're not similar at all. Have you seen some people who know exactly what to wear and what goes well with the other item of clothing? You would like to go shopping with them because they know what goes well with you or what color suits you. They basically know what to wear. These people have a great sense of style. If you have a great sense of style or if you have a good sense of style, you know what to wear. For example, his wife has a very good sense of style. She always looks great. And one last idiom that I want to teach you. Put your face on. To put your face on means to apply makeup to your face. For example, it's nine o'clock already and I haven't even put my face on. It means it's nine o'clock, we have to go to the party, but I haven't applied any makeup to my face. That's it, we have learned a lot of idioms, right? But how can you use them in action? Oh, let's see a dialogue. Did you see Jenny at the party last night? Yeah, she came into the house dressed to kill. She was the spitting image of her sister, Elizabeth. I don't think so. She definitely looked like a million dollars, but she and Elizabeth are like chalk and cheese. I think they bear no resemblance, but both of them have a very good sense of style and are always immaculately groomed. You may be right, but they have different complexions and body shapes. Plus, Jenny puts her face on too much. And that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to practice and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and click subscribe if you're new to my channel. See ya.